and here's uh, one of the dyes that I did yesterday. So it's, it's had about 24 hours to rest. I press that, it's pretty much going to stay like that now. So you can see me, my thumbprint in there. So I know that's good to go. So I'm just going to clear a bit of space off. And this bit does require some space. Part of the reason why I just do these in small batches is because I haven't got a lot of worktop space. So um, it, it makes a lot of sense to, to just do small batches and utilise the space I have got. So, I'm just going to stretch that out. And you want it to be relatively even. So we've got that stretched out again. I need to clear all this stuff out of the way because this bit does require as much space as you can afford. So this is the stage that Often I, I didn't quite get right, um, and it's this is the bit that I think takes the most practice. So I'm just going to roll this out flat. So. We've got this to a point where it's about the, the length that I want it to be. And now we're going to use the rolling pin. We're just going to press from the middle and we're just going to push this out. So you want it in the, the middle of your worktop to allow this to go out as far as you can. Now this particular uh, pastry dough here, I've, um, I've actually done using the machine as a bit of an experiment. So I was very careful not to overdo it. And so far it seems to be okay. It's not too uh, sticky, which is what happened when I did it before. Um, but I was very careful with just literally almost just starting it, stopping it, just letting it to mix, um, just to see whether that made any difference. And of course, if, you, if you're gonna go down that route, then you don't have to do the rolling it the eight, 10 times and stretching it that way there at that first phase. So we're just going to stretch this out now. This takes some time and it's really important to, to just take your time with it because you don't want to rush it but you want to get this as thin and as even as you possibly can. So I'm going to just pause this for a second and then um, I'll show you it when it's, it's ready for the next stage of it. So now we've got this as stretched as I possibly can. Um, as you can see that's almost um, so it's certainly doubled in its, its size there. It spreads out quite a long way. Um, so it's a really good, really good example of how far it goes. Um, it's still a little bit fat on the edges there, but I have rolled it out and I'm always careful not to, to tear it or if you do it too much, you, you end up sort of um, ripping it a little bit. So you just have to be kind of careful here. And I'm just gonna stretch that last little bit here over there. So now we've got, uh, Completely, something on here. Um, completely rolled out flat pastry there. So the next stage is, I've weighed out 150 grams of lard to 25 grams of butter. Now each to their own on this one. You can you can swap and change this a little bit. And I've just mixed that all together so it's nice and soft. Um, and it's important it is all mixed in together and it is as soft as you can get. So as you can see, nice and soft there. I'm just going to smear this all over here. Um, and this is the bit where, again, I have over time I've experimented. Sometimes I put a lot on. Um, when I first started doing this, I just used butter because I thought lard wasn't very good for you. Um, having done some research, actually, it's not as bad as everybody makes out. Um, and because you're not going to be eating these all the time um, and... You're, you're not, you're not going to have all of them all in one go, hopefully. Um, 
it's um it's not really not a problem there um obviously if you're on a diet it's not the most healthy of snacks um but you'd know that if that's what you were doing so it's just a case of of, of putting this all over nice and evenly i'm just going to get as much as i can out of there and then we're just going to use our hands and rub this in and you need to cover every part of this it's really important that you get as even um coating of this as possible um in order for it to to do its its thing this is the bit that's going to separate the layers i believe when we come to the cooking side of it so if you put too little on here you'll find that they're quite dry and they don't really taste very nice um, if you put too much on you'll find when it comes to the making of the pasta see they don't they, they don't stick together very well um, and i'll show you that as we as we go into that sort of final stage there so again good smothering of this all over um, and again, I find that this is about the right ratio, so about 175 grams in total, um, just spread all over the, all over this mix, all over the dough, getting it all over, nice and coated. Again, it is messy. There's no, there's no alternative, unfortunately, with this. Um, so uh, it does make your hands nice and soft. And again, just making sure you get to the edges and then when you're happy I just try and just gently smooth this over so that we've got it into this position here and then we want to just take a bit of a pause I'm going to just clean my hands off a little bit before we get to this next bit which is perhaps the trickiest of all of the phases each stage has their own challenge but again if you rush this you'll find it won't work um, and you'll be amazed at, at this is the, 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 the kind of bit where I think I probably made the most progress in my practicing um, I started making these in the first lockdown with the whole COVID-19 scenario um, couldn't get to Malta really miss my family out there wanted to um, have that taste of Malta and, and, and I think there's nothing more than than a, 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 a fresh pastizzi and a coffee or a cup of tea um, in the morning that that really sort of for me that's what whenever I go over to Malta that's the first thing I do in, in the morning is go and get some fresh pastizzis and again in the nice sunshine I get to have them so we're going to take this end here hopefully you can see this and as you can see it's quite stretchy already and we're just going to fold it and this is the trickiest part of it because it's just trying to get the the rolling bit has started and this is the bit where we do the, the stretch and roll process that I call it so we stretch it we give it a bit of a roll and then we stretch it again and just take your time because you need to make this as tight as possible because when you come to the final stage if it's not tight you'll find there are little holes and gaps in the in the in the pastry when you go to sort of stretch them out for actually making the individual pastizzis and um, it won't hold together so well so again just getting to that stage where it's it's now starting to to pull together and as you can see I'm pretty much back where I started initially because it does stretch quite a considerable amount and once you've got it going like this we need to be making an angle so we're going to roll it one way and then we're going to roll it the other way as we do that process and that's what gives the pattern that you see on those 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 unique pastitsis so stretch just got something on there and roll stretch and roll Stretch and roll. So again, we're stretching it as far, but without without actually ripping it. Um, it's not the end of the world if you do rip it, but do try not to. So again, stretch and roll. And you're slowly kind of getting to that point now where, again, the more practice you do with this stage. The faster and 
the further you can stretch it. And the further you stretch it, the better, the thinner those flaky layers will be. So again, just stretching it, alternating the sides, till we get to the end. And again, we're just gently stretching it. And you can see how it transforms, perhaps not so on the clip, but it really does go almost transparent. I'm just gonna flick that over like so. And that is the second stage complete. So again, just with a bit of butter, I'm sure there's people going, oh my God, how much butter, how much lard? Um, so again, just to make sure this is all nice and smothered there. And we're going to leave this now for at least overnight if you did it in an evening. Um, but I'm going to leave this till tomorrow. And then that will be my, my job for, for tomorrow will be to actually do that final stage where I'm going to be cutting this into individual pastizzi sizes. And I'll show you that in a moment on how we go about doing that. So there we go, that's all nice and covered there. And again, we just want to rest that. So just resting it gives it a chance to, to all settle down and it will also firm up slightly because it's been in, it will be in the fridge. And I think that also helps when it comes to, to that final stage. So I'm just going to pause it here while I just do a bit of tidying up. I'm going to cling film this up um, and then I'm going to show you the final stage of how that all goes.